Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have eight more Dollar Tree Shore Living DIYs for you. Hopefully I will give you some crafting inspiration for this great line available at Dollar Tree right now. This is my third video in this series, so if you haven't seen my others, I had one with 10 and I had one with nine DIYs. So I had one more cabinet empty in my living room and I filled it with beach decor. So are you ready to get started? Let me show you what we made. Okay, the first DIY, I wanna make like a shadow box. And so I am gonna use four of these little boxes from the Dollar Tree. These are the ones with the little metal file holders on front. And I'm not gonna need those, those are gonna kinda interfere. So I'm just gonna unscrew the little screws holding those in. And we're gonna have four little boxes all the same size. I think these come in more than one size. This is the larger one that I saw. And I wanna kinda put them together like that and kinda make like a shadow box. So now it's just a matter of putting it together. I'm gonna use a combination of hot glue and some wood glue from the Dollar Tree and do a section at a time. I'm gonna put the bottom two together. Um, you could use a clamp, but that hot glue dries pretty fast. And so I kinda got away without it. And then we're gonna do the same thing up here on the top. Just trying to keep my hot glue and wood glue separate so that it'll work properly. And then I just need to combine those two sections together. So again, just wood glue and hot glue combination. And we have our little shadow box. This turned out so cute and it's pretty sturdy. I was gonna reinforce the back, but I don't think I really need to. These boxes are really nice. Now, originally I was gonna use popsicle sticks and kind of cover the back, kind of like in a wood palette like pattern. But then I realized that the good wood on these are like on the outside and on the back. So why cover that up? It's really pretty. And I'm gonna be using a lot of that color wood in today's Shore Living DIYs. So let's go ahead and tape that all and protect it. Now the insides of the shadow boxes or the little boxes and then the front lip around are the MDF, like it's not the pretty wood. And so that would be a great section to paint. So I'm gonna use um, just a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree. And this is just Caribbean blue, acrylic paint. And I'm just gonna very sloppily um, paint all of those MDF surfaces with that blue paint. That way I won't have to go back in distress later. Um, if I don't get full coverage, that brown kind of shines through and it just kind of makes it look distressed. So just a very sloppy coat on all the insides of the little boxes and then on the front part there. And that looks really cool. I want it to, um, you know, look really coastal, but I want to do like a different like sea creature in each one of the little boxes. And so I thought I would do a combination of like that light wood color like some beachy blues and then like some ivory um, sea creatures. So we got that all painted, just a matter of untaping. I really hate taping things off like this, but <laughs> it had to be done. The taping worked pretty good. I didn't have very much um, leakage under the tape, but that is what we're, we have right now. And now um, for the creatures, I'm gonna use some of the shore living ornaments from the Dollar Tree. We're gonna use a sea turtle, a starfish, a seahorse, and some little fish. The little fish are actually clothespins, but I thought they would work. And I wanted like another kind of sea creature. Otherwise you could use the anchor. 
I think there might be a whale, but I don't, I don't think I found the whale. And the only um, difficult thing about these clothespins are sometimes they're barely attached and sometimes they are like super glued on. And these were like really super glued on. When I tried to pop them off, they like, I was breaking the tail off of them. So be careful. Um, I find the best way is to use a heat gun and one of those little spatulas, cricket spatulas from the Dollar Tree. And I ended up with two good ones there. Now, I have never found a good way to cover the holes in these ornaments without them showing, but someone told me to try hot glue. So this is my attempt at hot glue. Not a fan. I don't think it worked great. My hot glue gun does spit a lot of hot glue, so maybe that had something to do with it. But I'm going to go ahead and paint them ivory with some chalk paint to see um, what we're dealing with because I really don't want those holes in our little ornaments. And I don't really want to have to cover those up with anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint everything ivory. Now my second attempt is spackle. I'm kind of overfilling the holes with some of the spackling. And then I went in with my heat gun and dried the spackling and then sanded it off. Still not super impressed because you just can't get like, I don't know, you just can't get a flat surface there on the top. So this is my last attempt and this actually worked the best, just covering them with masking tape. I've used this on a different project before somewhere and I kind of remembered it. Um, since I'm painting it with chalk paint, it's kind of thick. So I think I might be able to cover uh, the tape mark and I'm going to distress it too, so I think that will cover it as well. So I just use masking tape and kind of sand off the excess around the edges. The seahorse was a little tricky trying to get that on there correctly, but that definitely worked the best. I kind of wish I would have done that first. And so I'm going to go ahead and paint them again with another heavy coat of that chalk paint by Waverly in the color ivory to cover up the masking tape and kind of bury it on there. I was happy with that. The little fish have holes, but they kind of make sense because they're like where the fish eyes would should be. Then I'm gonna follow that up with some Antique Wax by Waverly. We're gonna do a slight distress to kind of give like a wood grain, beachy distress on these little sea creatures. And if I get too much on there, I just wipe off the excess with a baby wipe we're gonna do the same thing with all these little sea creatures, kind of working um, horizontally. I know I'm gonna want my sea turtle kind of tilted like that, so I kind of lined it up appropriately. And then just going over with a baby wipe to wipe off any excess. I don't want them to be super brown, so I'm trying to like get some of that ivory to come back. And then just kind of distress till you're happy with them. I kind of want some of the distress marks on there, like physical marks. And so I go over it again with a very thin coat. And I'm just using one of those chunky brushes from the Dollar Tree. I love those for distressing. And I think they look pretty good. So we're ready to put this together. Um, I'm going to do two little fish and one of the little cubbies together like they're swimming. I kind of intended to use three, but two fit very nicely. And then a starfish. And I think these turned out really cute. I really like this idea. You know, you don't have to glue them together either. You could just have four sh um, separate signs that you can hang on the wall or use as shelf sitters for your cabinet. So we got them all hot glued on, looking super cute. Then I kind of wanted to do a fishnet. Now these are the fishnets from the summer section at the Dollar Tree. And I kind of just wanted to show you why I wasn't going to use this. The holes in these are really big. So they kind of work well for like large scale projects, which this is not. So I'm going to use one of these little tote bags from the Dollar Tree. I've used these before um, for fishnet and they're half pink, half um, ivory. And so I am just going to... Um, try to cut that off before the like ombre pink starts 
And I'm just going to use um, the ivory section here and just cutting off all of the banding. And I think this looks like a really cute little fishnet for our shadow box. And so I thought we could just kind of drape it over the top. It's just going to give a little extra character to this DIY. And I'm just going to attach the top of it to the back with a little dot of hot glue. And that's all there is to this little shore living DIY. I think it turned out so cute. It's the first time I've used any of those ornaments this year. I did use some of those last year. I think maybe with one of my 4th of July videos. And this is how it turned out. Isn't it cute? I paired it with a seashell that I had and filled up one of my shelves on my cabinet. I think it turned out really sweet. Okay, next up I'm going to use a sign from the Target Dollar Spot. I got these on clearance. I remember posting so you guys could try to go get some for yourself. Um, it's this beautiful color of wood and then one of these fish from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. Now I am going to tape off the inside with some painter's tape because I want to paint the frame just because I don't want it all to be wood. I wanted to bring some more blue color into it. So we're just going to paint the frame and then leave that cool like wood background. Looks very coastal, very beachy. And I got those signs on clearance for $1.50. Now there's two different kinds of these wood fish at Dollar Tree. My Dollar Tree's just started getting these in with their shore living line. Um, and it was kind of my inspiration for the whole piece. I really like the different blues together with the ivory. And so I'm going to try to mix that um, ivory um, with the um, Caribbean blue paint to give me this very soft color of blue, which is one of the colors on the little fish there from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to simply paint the frame and I'm going to just do a very sloppy coat and that way I won't have to go back and distress. This DIY was super simple and it just turned out so pretty. Good job Dollar Tree on these fish. I love them. And so we're just going to attach that to our sign with a little bit of hot glue and easy peasy. We have another um, shore living beach DIY for you. Just going to glue it on. So easy and so cute. Doesn't that look cute together? And then I also want this to be a standing sign. It was kind of a hanging sign from the Target Dollar Spot. And so to do that, I'm just going to use a couple wood blocks. These are the giant Jenga blocks from Five Below. I love these. I get these every year for crafting. Tons of craft wood. And I'm just going to attach those to the back with hot glue, leaving a little lip um, in between because I want it to slightly tilt back so that the sign will stand up right. And there we go. And this is how it looks on my shelf. I paired it with a wood seahorse that I have, and I think it looks really cute. Okay, our next DIY. I'm going to use one of these Shore Living Anchors from the Dollar Tree. And then a little wood house sign from the Target Dollar Spot. I also got those on clearance recently at the Target Dollar Spot for $1.50. And this one was kind of broken anyway. The back was coming off it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove the hanger to make sure I can get all of it off. And the frame is perfect. It's the exact color of wood that we're working with today. But we can't have everything white. So I am going to go for that color again with the Caribbean blue mixed with the ivory to give me a very soft blue. And I'm just going to paint the back of this house this color. And if you can't find a sign like this, you could use any Dollar Tree or Dollar Spot sign. It doesn't even have to be a house, but I thought the house would be kind of fun. It would be kind of like a marina, like a house with a big anchor on it, right? So very simple coat. And then all we have to do is glue that back on. There's kind of a lip inside this frame. And I'm going to do a bead of hot glue all around and then just put that back, back on. So easy. And then all we have to do is um, decorate the anchor. Now the anchor is white. And I, li I like the contrast. I do just want to slightly distress it though. So I'm going to use some antique wax by Waverly. 
and do a light distress. The finish on this was a little glossy, so when I would wipe off the excess with my baby wipe, a lot of it came off, but that's okay. I just really wanted like a very light distress on there just to kind of go with all the other decor today. I don't want any like stark whites. I want everything to be kind of distressed and beachy. And so that's all there is to it. We just have to hot glue it on. I thought about doing a rope around it, but I kind of like the simplicity without a rope. So that's it, just like that. And again, this was a standing sign from the Target dollar spot, and I want it to be a shelf sitter. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did on the last sign. I'm going to use just one of the little um, giant Jenga blocks and glue that on the back. And you can use whatever wood you have. They even have those little wood blocks from the Dollar Tree, which would work pretty equivalent. And there it is. And this is how it looks on my shelf. I think it turned out really sweet. It was so easy. Okay, are you ready for the next Shore Living DIY? We're going to use, I don't I think this is shore living it's in their like regular section but it is a beachy sign and then this is a shore living um, galvanized metal shell so I thought we could make a cute little shelf sitter with this uh, mine was kind of broken anyway the metal galvanized metal sign there was kind of coming off and I don't really want to go with the the sea creature pattern on there so I thought I would just flip it over and work on the back um, the glue on the front kind of left too much residue to really work with that side. And the back will give me a nice um, blank surface to work with and I can just paint it. So I kind of wanted to do like a background for the seashell. I want to attach the seashell to the front of the sign. But I want it to kind of coordinate with all of the other projects that we did today. So we're going to paint like this little top arch part. Um, blue. So again, I'm going to use that Caribbean blue mixed with ivory. You can use whatever your favorite blue is. And we're just going to paint that top part and leaving uh, the bottom part, that natural wood color, which I tried to use that on almost all of the DIYs today. I really think it looks nice together. Now for the little galvanized metal shell, just going to take the hanger off and then I am going to use that same technique that, that worked well for the wood to cover the holes in that, just using masking tape. And I'm gonna paint this with chalk paint. So I was hoping that I could cover it up like I did before, because this is hard to patch the holes on these as well. And this worked pretty well. And I really don't care if there's a couple extra ridges on there. It's just gonna add a little bit more character to our shell. So I'm just using Ivory um, Chalk Paint by Waverly and kind of working in the direction of the shell and giving a good coat all over. I don't really want any of the galvanized metal to show through, so I do have to go over with even several coats of the chalk paint to make sure I get a good finish on there. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for watching my video today. I um, and would really appreciate it if you would hit the like button. When you're done watching today, comment your favorite project below. I would really appreciate it. It really helps the YouTube algorithm. My channel is doing a lot better in the last couple weeks. So good news. And then I want to attach a word to this sign as well. And so I'm going to use some of these little galvanized metal letters from the Dollar Tree. You buy them and you only get half the alphabet, which is kind of tricky if you're not paying attention. But luckily, beach is all in the top half of the alphabet. So we are good and they only need one letter of each. So I'm just going to paint those with that same ivory chalk paint. And I'm going to make the letters for the little front of the sign. And I, I really love how this project turned out. It's really, really cute. So once I get everything ivory, I'm going to distress it with some Antique Wax by Waverly, kind of working in the direction that the shell fans out as well. And just like with anything else, I just go back with a baby wipe and wipe off the excess. And this doesn't have as much character as the shell that I did in my first Shore Living DIY video the little like candy dish or whatever. 
Um, but it's still really nice. It really turned out nice. Also going to slightly distress all of the letters in beach. And I just keep distressing it until I'm happy with it. Just very lightly. And this should be dry now. So we have a good background. Just trying to find the center of the sign so we can start lining up our letters. And I did have a little trouble hot gluing these galvanized letters to it. Um, the glue kind of dried really fast and I didn't really want, I needed like more of a fine tip hot glue gun maybe, or maybe a different kind of glue, but I did get them all on there eventually. <laughs> I thought about taking that back section off and just sitting the shell down in the ridge um, that would be there, but I kind of like the fact that I brought some blue into this project. So I think the back definitely serves a purpose. And I think it's so much prettier than the other side. I do like that the other side is coastal, but I like this, this vibe better. So I'm just gonna hot glue that down to the back, being careful, because that gets super hot. I didn't think it was attached really well though, so I put a whole bunch of hot glue in the back there. And I just take a wood domino from the Dollar Tree and kind of slide it down in there to give a little bit more um, place for it to attach. And this is how it turned out. What do you think? I think it turned out really cute. Okay, our next Shore Living DIY. We're just going to give this sign a little makeover. Um, I'm going to make it a sitting sign so I don't need a hanger on the back. And it says, home is where the waves crash. Super cute. I'm going to go ahead and try to remove the galvanized metal word home. Um, just removing it so that it will make it easier to paint. It was attached pretty well. So I'm gonna use a combination of my heat gun and one of those spatulas and try to pop this off. It does rip the paper a tiny bit, but nowhere that's gonna be noticeable because I will reattach this word when I'm done painting it. Now this has the perfect wood frame for um, our projects today, but the paper itself just kind of looks you know, like paper, like a Dollar Tree sign. So I just want to distress it to make it look more like a hand-painted sign and give it more character. So I'm just using some ivory acrylic and just kind of distressing in one direction to kind of break up that blue. Um, since we're working with different shades of blue today, I think this blue is going to be perfect. And just trying to get a little bit more distress on there. Um, the paper does want to wipe a lot of it off. And I think that looks pretty good. I kind of want to break up some of that whiteness on the writing and stuff as well. Now for the word home, I want to paint that too. I'm going to mix that same color, that Caribbean blue, with the ivory to give this very soft, beachy blue color. And just go ahead and paint all of that on the word home. You could totally leave the galvanized metal because you know that we've had galvanized metal on several projects if that's your vibe. But I really wanted to do the blues and the whites and that natural wood color for all the DIYs today. And they all just really flow really nicely together. And then uh, for a little bit more distress, I'm gonna use some Antique Wax by Waverly and distress some more. That's really going to um, kind of make the white writing and the waves and stuff like a little bit more ivory color and a little less white. Just add some more character to the sign as well. And this DIY was really easy. Um, all we're going to have to do is reattach our word, our home, in the soft blue color. I think that looks really nice. I'm just gonna glue that back on with some hot glue. And then I wanna make this a standing sign as well. And so again, I'm just gonna use some of those Jenga blocks from Five Below and glue a couple on the back, just not all the way to the edge with a little bit of room. And that makes a perfect standing sign for my shelf, but you could always leave it hanging if that is where you need it to be in your home. And we are done. This is how it turned out. It's a very nice sign. And this is how it looks on my shelf. I think it just turned out really cute. Okay. 
On to our next DIY. This one's gonna be very simple as well. I'm using one of these wood frames from the Dollar Tree with a cute wood bead hanger and one of these Shore Living glass stickers, the mermaid one from the Dollar Tree. So I am just gonna pop off the back of this sign so that I can recover it with something else and it's super easy to take apart. I'm gonna just go ahead and try to rip off the paper. Um, any loose parts that would cause any trouble with my DIY, I just try to get it off there. And I don't worry about all the rough paper on there because we're gonna cover that up. And I thought a good background would be some of this removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree. This is the one that looks like white wood. And I just lay the back on the back and draw that out. It's gonna give me a perfect cut to cover the back of this. And it looks very beachy. I really like to use this one in particular for my DIYs. So we're just gonna peel that off and stick that down. The only thing I don't like about it is that it's a little white, a little stark. So I always like to soften it up with a little ivory distressing, just some ivory acrylic, just to kind of soften the lines and bring a little bit more ivory into it and a little less white. Now, easy peasy. Now, this, this one says, Wonder by the sea, should you ever want to find me? And it's got a little mermaid on there, so cute. So just peel the sticker off. It doesn't have to be glass. You can attach this to anything. And then I do a light distress with some more of that ivory paint, just to kind of make it look a little bit more weathered and a little less glossy. And then we're just gonna pop this in the back of that Dollar Tree frame. And I think it turned out really sweet. I'm gonna kind of leave the little handle on there, even though it's gonna be a shelf sitter. Just to add a little bit more character to the side. There it is. So easy, can't get any easier than that DIY. I love it, I love mermaids, <laughs> of course. So on to our next DIY. I'm gonna use one of these Shore Living Yard Stakes. This one is the sailboat and one of these wood blocks from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. And I thought we could make a little sailboat um, display. So I just need to break it off because I want to attach the little metal stake into the wood block. And so to break it, I thought I would just bend it back and forth, which is what I did. It's a little stronger than I thought it would be though. So it took quite a few times of bending it. I'm just using my pliers to help because it was like really strong wire. And um, just going back and forth until it can get weak enough to break off and that did end up working. Just a little bit harder than I thought it would be. Then I like the colors on this, but it's a little too green. So I thought it would be really pretty to do like an ombre finish on this little sailboat. And so I'm gonna start with that Caribbean blue over on the left side. And we're gonna kind of work different shades of blue over to the up to over to the right side and kind of finish it up with some ivory over on that side. So to do an ombre, you can just start with one color and then I mixed some ivory in there to give me this neck shade of blue and then mix that with the original color to kind of give you like a color in between to kind of make the colors gradually fade in the ombre, it gives you a really nice effect. And I do like the paint job on this better. I really like just the blues and none of the green. And I would like to take the opportunity to invite you over to our Facebook group. We have a Facebook group called Crafty Beach. I will post a link below. It's a great place for you guys to show me what you're working on. You can see what everybody else, all the other Crafty Beach moms are working on. You can see what I've made. And we would really love to have you over there. So again, I will post a link to that below. I'm also gonna post a link to my Instagram. I'm doing a lot of reels over there. And my Pinterest. And I even have a TikTok now. Trying to get hip with the kids, right? <laughs> and so I really like how that turned out. Now it's just a matter of attaching it to the wood block. I thought these used to be solid, but they are definitely hollow now. And so I just drilled a little hole in um, the wood block 
so that we can put the little yard stake in there and I tested to make sure that it fit. Then I'm just gonna paint the little wood block with some ivory acrylic, kind of a rough um, paint job all over. That way I really won't have to go back and distress it. And it's gonna give me that beachy ivory look. Very easy. And this made the perfect little base for our little a sailboat. A sailboat wasn't real heavy, so I think it's gonna be okay even though the block is hollow. And since it's hollow, I just drip the hot glue down inside. So we'll pull up inside the wood block and then I stuck the yard stake down inside of it so it would glue it down inside the little um, wood block. Then to decorate the wood block itself, I thought we'd use one of these little shore living clothespins. This is the little seahorse. And again, like Dollar Tree used some super glue on these clothespins. It did not want to come off. I really thought I was going to end up breaking this. I was using heat. I was using my spatula. I do manage to finally get it off, but they did not make it easy on me. That is for sure. And I'm still working at it, guys. I'm going to leave it that natural wood color. It's going to go with our other DIYs today and bring some little wood into it. And then your girl forgot to hit record. All I did was take some of this twine from Walmart and glue it to the sailboat, wrap it all the way around the little yard stake until I got to the wood block, and then cut it off and I'm just gluing down the bottom of that. Gonna clean it up a little bit with a flame to get off any of the loose fibers on that. And that was just a quick, easy way to cover that up. With that thicker twine, you don't have to wrap it as much as you would with the smaller twine from the Dollar Tree. And there is our finished DIY. Now, you know, I had to add one more thing. So just a very light distress of ivory over that blue, just to kind of give it that coastal beachy vibe. And now I'm super happy with it. I displayed it with our anchor house there and one of my starfish, and I think it looks really cute. Okay, our last DIY, DIY number eight, is one of these seahorse planters from the shore living section at Dollar Tree. Now, I'm gonna mix up that pretty blue color, the Caribbean blue with the ivory, and I'm gonna go all over this pot with one of those chunky brushes and give a very sloppy distressed coat, not worrying about the fact that there's twine at the top or going all the way to the bottom, because I want it to look distressed and I don't want full coverage. I do try to avoid the seahorse because I do wanna do something else with that and I wanna make sure that I know where it's at. So if I get any paint on that, um, I just wipe it off with a baby wipe and then I switch to a smaller brush to kind of do some of the more fine details around the seahorse and any areas where I needed to touch it up a little bit. And I think that looks really cute. I give it a good dry and then I'm gonna go in with a turquoise Sharpie paint pen and just make the little starfish, there were two starfish that were kind of stamped in it just to kind of break that up with a different shade of blue. And then we are going to paint the little seahorse part there um, ivory. I'm gonna start with a white paint pen I wish I had an ivory one and I'm not sure why I don't, but I'm using um, just a white Sharpie paint pen and just kind of coloring in the little seahorse on the front. I have several of these. I think I have one with a starfish and one with a crab maybe on the front of it. They're super cute, nice little pots. And once I get that all painted, I'm gonna go in and distress it more with some ivory acrylic kind of all over the blue and especially making sure that I distress like the little seahorses to kind of break up the color on that. Then I'm gonna switch to a tiny a brush and do that ivory chalk paint all over the little seahorse to make it look ivory. And that definitely made it look a little bit softer. I didn't really think that the stamping of the seahorse was great. Um, I didn't think it really looked like a seahorse that much. So I do go and kind of try to paint the little ridges on the back of the seahorse. And I think that made it look more like a seahorse. 
it gave it a little bit more detail. Now, I'm not gonna do a plan or anything in this. I thought we would fill this with seashells. So to fill the rest of the pot, I'm just gonna use some newspaper just to fill up all that dead space with something free or inexpensive. And then to cover that up, because I don't want the paper to be visible, I'm just gonna use some Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree to cover the paper up. And then I thought we would fill this with, like make it an overflowing bucket of seashells, because that's what I have when I'm at the beach. Now I'm gonna use some of these Shore Living um, Sand Dollar, one Sand Dollar, and one of the Starfish for some larger pieces. Then I'm just gonna use some seashells. Most of these are from the Dollar Tree, some of them are from the beach. And I'm just gonna kind of pick out an assortment of shells that I like, and just start piling them in there until I'm happy with it. I don't want it to look like kind of like sag down and look like there's not a lot of shells in it. I want it to look like it's overflowing with shells. So I just keep building and building. Again, trying to keep in the same color scheme, but um, I definitely want some interesting looking shells in there as well. And that's all there is to this DIY. It's just gonna be a seahorse bucket full of shells. And I think it turned out really Beachy, it's kind of hard to see. Oh, that's a little bit better. Um, and I put it next to that sign that we made. I think it turned out so cute. Okay, I wanted to give a big thank you to Sarah B for being the first person to give me a super thanks on YouTube. This is a new feature that they've just added to my channel. Um, you'll see a little super thanks below my video, and it's a great way for you to support this channel. You can make whatever donation you want. I think the minimum donation is $2, and it's just a great way for you to show your appreciation to me, help support this channel, and it might even buy me a couple things at the Dollar Tree to craft with. Thank you, Sarah B. Okay, you've made it to the final reveal. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.
for better days to come and carry us like wind in our sails. Hold on tight, I can smell the shore, it's right in front of us if we just hold on tight. This vision that I saw is getting closer every dawn. Dreamers of the Every dawn